morning. This is Amar Jyot Singh, and I'm here to talk to you about something called schooling visa in many countries, but it is just simply studying in Canada as a minor applicant. Uh, many years ago, when I did my first schooling visa uh, in the year of, I think, 2013 or 14, that visa application was denied. Uh, this was in New Delhi High Commission. And the reason uh, that they gave at that time was it is not reasonable for a student to take a, such a big expense of 14000 or $13,000 for a one year of study instead of cheaper options in India at that time. And we tried a couple of times, second time or third time, and it did not uh, uh, happen. You know, the visa officers would not sweat about our reasons uh, to take this expense uh, and, and study this uh, grade seven or grade eight, I think, at that time uh, in Canada. Uh, what is uh, the policy of schooling visa at this point of time? And I also remember in many uh, you know, many areas in India at that time, in uh, starting in about three years uh, ago, many uh, TV shows and consultants were advertising schooling visas profusely uh, in in all those uh, TV channels, saying that they can help families get the minor study visa, and not only minor visa uh, for students, but also help their parents get PR based on that those uh, student visas. Uh, fortunately, those uh, ads have fizzled out and I have exposed many of them. Uh, they were uh, charging exorbitant amount of money from parents, uh, asking them to pay up certain money for them to not only send their students, but also get PR for them. Uh, we're going to examine today in this short video about what is uh, schooling visa, what is the policy about uh, minor study visa. And then uh, we will also discuss about a case recently which uh, brought my attention to schooling visa. So let's dive in. I am uh, showing on the screen, this is a Government of Canada uh, policy document listed on the website, studying in uh, Canada as a minor. So let's take a look, what is a minor child? A minor child is some, it all depends on the age. A minor child is something which is uh, in many provinces when you are less than 18 and some other provinces like BC, you are less than 19. After 19, you become age of majority in BC, New Brunswick, New Finland, and Alberta, Manitoba, and all those other uh, places after the age of 18. So that's the demarcation of a, of a minor student. Uh, how do minor students uh, come to Canada? If they get study admission and if they pay up the fees, if they get the, all the letter of um, offer and they have the money, they they can come either with their parent or they must have a custodian in Canada, which is like a like a guardian in Canada. So uh, minor ch children under the age of 17, for example, in provinces where you're 18. So at least uh, from 17 to 18, it will take one year for you to get to the age of majority. So you must uh, accompany your parent or a legal guardian or you must have a custodian within Canada. A custodian is a responsible adult who is a Canadian citizen or a PR who will take care of and support the minor child. A custodian is optional for minors 17 years of age and older, uh, but under the age of 17, a custodian is needed, but an officer can request one on one by one basis. So that's, that's an important requirement of the schooling visa. Uh, how to appoint a uh, custodian? So there is a form here. So if you click on it, it will uh, show you a form. Uh, any, uh, your relative, friend, somebody who wants to take responsibility of the child in Canada, they can uh, take the custodianship and they can, they can sign it and, you know, uh, send it to the applicant. So that form is to be used with the study visa application. So here's something to understand here. Minor children who want to study for six months or more must apply for study permit. They cannot come here on a regular tourist visa. So if the study is for six months or more, for example, one year of secondary school, then you definitely need to apply for, for study visa. Uh, this includes minor children who come with parents or who had a study or work permit approved over, overseas. Uh, if, if uh, for example, if the parent has a study permit or a work permit and they want to bring their child as a, as a dependent, uh, you know, to live with them, they must apply if they are school going age, if they're less than secondary, uh, less than 17 years of age, 
uh, they they need to apply for a study visa. They cannot bring them on a on a visitor visa. So uh, next line, you do not need a study permit for a program of six months or less, but you must still apply for one before entering. There's an advantage in applying for, even if it is the program is less than uh, six months, there's advantage of getting the study visa instead of tourist visa because they're because you can convert them, you know, within Canada to some something else, which is not possible in tourist visa. All right. So next line: If you're coming to Canada with parents who have a valid study or work permit, you don't need to provide a letter of acceptance from a school when you apply for a, a study permit. Absolutely, absolutely correct. Otherwise, you need a letter of uh, admission offer. All right. So we're making some progress here. Uh, minors. Uh, already in Canada should apply for study permit. Of course, uh, in some provinces or territories, they may need one to receive social services. Sometimes uh, if you apply for social services um, and if you don't have the study permit, it makes things difficult for them, like on a tourist visa. Uh, minor children who are already in Canada may study without the study permit if they are in kindergarten. Uh, if they want to go to preschool, primary or secondary school and have a parent who's allowed to work or study in Canada. Uh, of course, uh, refugees, parents are refugee, refugee claimants are parents who are refugee, refugee uh, claimants came to Canada as a visitor for a course program or six months uh, or less. So they can study without the study permit. Uh, you know, typically if the if the program is less than six months, but if it's longer than six months, like one year of school, then definitely you need a study permit. All right, minors who don't need a study permit need a valid, a valid they must have at least a valid a visa status. All right, so that's good. Uh, let's make, uh, so this is for who want to apply from within, which I don't want to go here. So that's that's pretty much it. So uh, in in short, you need uh, you need a custodian and you need at least a course which is longer than six months. So let's uh, take a look at the checklist, uh, which I'm looking at uh, for uh, people who are applying from India. For example, this is a regular checklist, I, you know, uh, for, for generally for everybody, but I'll show you uh, what does it say about minors here. Uh, minors traveling alone or a person other than the uh, parents or legal guardian should have a letter of authorization signed by both parents and legal guardians. It should also include the name of adult who will be responsible, which is a custodian, as we as we saw it uh, earlier. So this is something uh, is a part of the checklist as well. Uh, why are we discussing all this today? Is that I'm going to show you a case where uh, somebody applied for a schooling visa in India. I think last year we will check the date, and they were refused. And uh, incensed by the refusal, they actually challenged the visa refusal in a federal court in Canada and they actually uh, won the case and then so it it uh, opens a ray of uh, you know hope for other people who are applying for schooling visa to to specify those reasons clearly to the application that even though it's expensive uh, but it's still reasonable to follow through and and get the study visa so let's take a look at this case and uh, here's the case I'm going to show on the screen. As usual, it is uh, posted on June 25th. Uh, the name of the judge and the docket number, citation number, everything is listed there, including the insignia of the federal court and the name of the client, Faizan Ibrahim Motala versus the Minister of Immigration. Let's take a look at what is happening in the, in the case. Uh, so here. So I'm just reading the background. I've done the research and homework for you in advance. So let's dive in uh, the background. Uh, Faisan Ibrahim Motala is a 16 year old citizen of India, minor student. He was accepted at Pine Ridge Secondary School in Durham region, Ontario for the school year beginning September 2019. Let's take a look at what the, what the school is. Many schools in Canada, like this school in Durham, uh, they, they take uh, international students at uh, at a higher price than the local people. Local people don't pay anything, but students pay, international students pay a lot. So let's take a look at this uh, school. Uh, so this is a Durham District School Board. Uh, you can see uh, the phone number, everything listed there, and they take international students. International students who wish, wishing to enroll in programs must pay a huge amount of fees. In that time, close to about $14,600, all right? So that's the fees for one year. That's the fees for one year. So this is what they applied for. And it tells you everything, the phone number, everything. So there's some agent must have 
then the application and of course they got admission here so let's take let's come back to the case uh, so they paid uh, exactly 14800 which is uh, if you look at 14600 plus 200 dollars right here uh, here application fees of 200 plus 14600 so 14800 dollars was paid as uh, uh, a fees for the whole year for the school year beginning September 2019, which is the, the year just passed. The amount of 10,000 was committed by the father to cover the applicant's room and board. So 14,800 plus 10,000, that means $24,800 was already remitted to the school. And the applicant stated in his statement of purpose that he would be staying at his aunt's house in the region who would also be his custodian. So we have a custodian as well. All right, so let's take a look. The applicant initially made an application for study visa was made on November 21st, 2018. Application was refused close to about three weeks later. Oh, about, uh, yeah, close to about two weeks later because the immigration officer was not satisfied that the purpose of study was reasonable and the applicant would depart to Canada. The applicant made a second application was again made on, on May 27th and that was also refused. Uh, and in the July, and that was refused. Finally, the second application on July 15th, the officer indicated that he was not satisfied based on, but he also noted the proposed studies are not reasonable. This is what I was talking about, that they don't like, uh, they don't like the minor uh, study visa, also called schooling visa, because those studies do not look reasonable from the point of view of the visa officer sitting at New Delhi High Commission. Why would you pay $14,800? to go study for one year in, in Canada while you can do it cheaply in India as well. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, uh, okay, and here, uh, GCMS, I've done some research for you. So these were the GCMS notes, what the visa officer wrote in his, um, in his uh, file. I have reviewed all the documentations provided for this application summary of key findings below. The applicant seeks to attend secondary school. The applicant has failed to satisfy in the pursuing this level of study is reasonable given the high cost of international study. Here it is actually. This is, this is the main reason. The high cost of international study and considering the local options available for. So comparing, uh, comparing to one year of secondary school in India is much cheaper than paying $14,000 overseas. So this is what their main reason is and the applicant's personal, financial, and familiar circumstances. Therefore, I'm not satisfied the applicant would be a bona fide student. So this was the main reason. So, and then later on, of course, uh, uh, now the judge will judge will decide. So I, I will not go uh, to read each and every page, but let me just jump to something which I have highlighted uh, for you. Uh, an officer's analysis of study permit application is highly discretionary, of course, and should be afforded a significant degree of deference on review, uh, citation of a different, uh, a different case, uh, Echo Mulafe. All right, and so uh, the judge is deciding whether it, it meets the standard of reasonableness, which is, which is the hallmark of all, all judicial review cases. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, I've done some research for you. The officer here co commented on the high cost of program availability of less expensive uh, uh, courses. And uh, let's take a look here. Here it is in the paragraph number 17. There's no indication in the present case why the officer considered the cost of program to be unreasonable. The evidence did not suggest that the tuition fees would exhaust the father's saving, unlike in a different case. Rather, the evidence indicated that the father had sufficient savings and healthy investments and properties and could support his son financially during his studies in Canada. In other words, the father of the applicant had enough financial resources to let his st uh, son study there. And $14,800 was not uh, any, any matter of concern for them financially. Um, I've highlighted uh, the officer may have considered that the cost of year in Canadian high school for international is more unreasonable, but, the ev but that evidently was the choice the applicant was prepared to take and the one that the father could support. So it was, was very clear the judge was not influenced by the visa officer's decision that, you know, it's too costly and that, that is how the judge decided against the visa officer. So let's take a look. The conclusion, number 18. I'm satisfied that the officer did not adequately engage with the evidence. The officer's reasons do not live up to the reasonableness 
framework established by the Supreme Court Canada in Vavilov case. In particular, the decision does not allow this court to understand the reasoning process followed by the decision maker to arrive at his conclusion. Uh, so that is very clear in, in 19. In the result, this application will be granted and the matter remitted for reconsideration by another officer. So we send this decision back to the another officer uh, and then let them let them decide. So I do not know as of right now that the person got the visa or not, but uh, you know, I am still trying to contact the lawyer to find out if the student is already in Canada or not, because the second visa officer may have also denied it, you know, due to different reasons. But for this reason, uh, it was not accepted by the federal judge. All right, so this was uh, this was the case. Uh, what did you learn from this? So I'll just go through the last line. The application was granted, uh, and uh, that's it. No question was certified. Richard Mosley is judge, uh, and uh, Faizan Ibrahim Mutala, uh, and this was date of hearing was on June, or this by a video conference, June 10th, which is uh, last month, or oh, that's why it's posted on June 25th, um, and uh, uh, I, I, so it's, it's very, so if this was uh, decided on, it, this this was, uh, uh, you know, on June 25th, so it looks like very recent, so unlikely that the student may have already been in Canada now, uh, because they are not open for issuing some study visa and reconsideration by a different visa officer, so, so I, I, I'm still trying to contact the student and the lawyer to find out what happened uh, you know what is their future plan? So we'll we will see. And the name of the lawyers and the representative from the government also listed. So everything is very clear. If you want to read this um, case, you know the name and and the docket number, everything you can copy and paste and go to Google, and and you can check it, check it out. The reason why we are discussing the student visa case uh, uh, today is that many consultants, immigration consultants, and other study consultants who have been advertising for schooling visa for many years, they may have stopped now because uh, they were giving some fake promises because it will lead to their parents' visa or parents' PR, which was never the case. But nonetheless, the student visas were never granted. This case is a beacon of light. Uh, for hope for you to undertake a fresh application. If you have a person with sufficient financial resources, I think you can successfully argue in favor of your client and then you know win the study visa for you. So thank you very much for your uh, attention and I hope uh, you will get some benefit out of this case. Uh, I'm sorry I had to speak in English because many people have commented in Canada that English is the language of Canada and I must present my videos in English because when I speak in Hindi or Punjabi, they cannot understand. So, jere log Punjabi wale jere menu kende ki bhi tu si Punjabi je kya karo ji main sanu English samaj nahi chandi ke ki bhi tu si yata Hindi bhi na bolo Punjabi bolo jere Hindi wale kende ji ab Punjabi me ki bolte ab Hindi me bola karo Hindi chala chhe samjhati. So, bada confusion hai ki kaun si language me present kiya jaye. But in Canada, they say that you should speak English or French. If you speak French, you French, so I cannot speak, but English should speak English. So uh, fortunately, you know, today is the English day and uh, this video was made in English. But nonetheless, hey, the, the point of matter is very clear. Schooling visa uh, can be successfully um, applied and the visa obtained, provided you have adequate financial resources. But let me be very clear, which I have uh, you know, which, uh, which, which I have uh, presented in my videos of last year's is that study visa does not help the parents of the child to get a visa and also the PR, which many consultants were mistakenly and and erroneously claiming in their ads. So, which I of of course I have challenged them. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope to see you soon and uh, look at your file if you have any case which has been struck down. I'm looking to research and give you some legal advice. Bye-bye.